The His Girl Friday podcast is brought to you in part by Messenger Fellowship, living the kingdom, fulfilling the call, proclaiming the truth. Happy online shopping day, everyone. It's kind of odd saying happy Black Friday. I like to just think of it as we're on the other side of Thanksgiving Eve. But seriously, hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving, an awesome time with friends and family. I know for me, it's been a special Thanksgiving week so far. I have uh, well, a couple of extended family members in town, uh, one of them being my grandma, my dad's mom. Always a special treat when she's able to fly in from Seattle. Also, I have my sister, my youngest sister, Kaylee. Uh, she's 25. She's one of the best little sisters a guy can have. Uh, she is in from New York City. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, it was commonplace to have the whole family around. Uh, growing up, we all lived within 10 minutes of each other back in San Jose, California. Um, and even when uh, we moved, you know, we moved out to Tennessee and you know, our family kind of scattered around the East Coast, uh, you know, we always found a way to be among each other on Thanksgiving. But uh, as far as this decade has gone, it's been rare to all be together for the holidays. And so, yeah, not all of us could, you know, we're in town, but uh, to have my sister who moved to New York last year, she she missed Thanksgiving and Christmas last year, actually. Um, it was just really nice uh, to all be together and that sense of togetherness has been a plus. Uh, not that it hasn't been in previous years, but just this this Thanksgiving week has been more enjoyable, um, I suppose, because I'm appreciating it for all the right reasons. And sometimes when we're younger, we enjoy the traditions and the customs more than the people. And maybe for some of us, it is hard being around the people. Um, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's not, you know, things aren't peachy keen with everyone in my family, but... Um, you know, yeah, just had a, for the most part, it's just been a really stellar week. And so I wanted to share some things uh, that have been on my mind lately. And uh, I also want to share a special poem I wrote. Uh, in fact, I may start with that first. And this is a, uh, this is a tradition that has been going on since 2002. So 17 years in the making. And sometimes I'll do like a top 10 thankful list. Sometimes I'll write something that's more prose. This is definitely a you know, pure poem. And this was the goal. <laughs> the initial goal was to record this live to go on social media. I thought it would be a cool way to extend uh, our Thanksgiving table to yours. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there were some technical difficulties. And the live video just never could render and post, um, even though it was shot. So I figured uh, this could be the outlet for it, so I know it's a day late, but better late than never. Better now than never, I should say. So, um, And so it begins, this day set for thanks, of all the has-beens, filled, plages, filled pages and blanks. We feast in the light of those that we prize, and ambient glows of turkey and pies. But this year the scene is unlike the past. A date long foreseen, we're together at last. And it's here that I pause to draw close attention for what is and what was now stand at retention. Proximity posited, once taken for granted. Now closeness deposited, new life that's been planted. Truth is there are seeds embedded within the leads to our needs, new hope building in. Thus, as the time cues, let's revel and tell the news we could shine and share light as well. Let joy be the th- rhythm, the theme of our years, the reason we punch at the gut of our fears, and dwell in the land of promise secured, equitable faith from hard times endured. So here's to the legacy of family and room, tears to the destiny of what will come soon, and to all who hear this, be glad in this way, delight in light often. Why not start today? So for anyone who, you know, enjoys writing poems, you know, maybe that's some fodder if you want to write something similar, future holidays to come. I just think it's great to express gratitude in creative, unique ways as it pertains to just who you are, you know, whatever floats your boat. Um, Just 
finding yeah creative avenues to express gratitude it's always uh it's, it's always amazing when you anchor your attitude and your hard posture just simply giving things and, and declaring that and making that known um, I know for a lot of us, we tend to, Thanksgiving is something that's assumed and not voiced, uh, not directly expressed, but you know, this is the week to do that. And, um, but I want to parlay off that point uh, and talk about something like more of a message, I suppose. Uh, not that I want to preach tonight, but you know, this week tends to emphasize <laughs> the holes in my Thanksgiving, if you will. Uh, not that I, you know, I don't give thanks when I pray, uh, but a lot of times it's, you know, Thanksgiving, it could always be more consistent, I suppose is what I'm trying to say. At least with me, I feel like it's not, it, it's at a good start, a starting point, but it could, it has room to mature and grow. And even when uh, I am giving thanks, most of the time it's, between me and God, it's in quiet time, and it's not something that is really shared. It's something that is delivered vertically, uh, but I really believe that Thanksgiving done right, um, there's that vertical element and that horizontal element that, you know, you're sharing it. So um, so this, uh, this pod ties into my latest post on His Girl Friday. You can check it out. It's called Thanks Living Right. Um, and it, it centers on this idea that uh, for many of us, Thanksgiving is something that, uh, you know, it is part of our joy package, but it's just periodical a lot of times. Um, and we, we keep it compartmentalized within ourselves and our walks with the Lord. Or sometimes it's uh, just, it, it's kept between close relationships and it's not something that is part um of our mission, you know, when we talk about reaching the lost, reaching the brokenhearted, loving them, um, are we sharing good news with them? Are we sharing our Thanksgiving with them, essentially? Or are we just out to do good works or charity or, or benevolence? Are we detaching Thanksgiving from our benevolence? So these are things that have been on my mind lately. So uh, we'll just jump right in. Um, so it's really, it, it's easy to love this time of year. I don't know about you, but just you get outside, you got these smoky smells of autumn. There's still traces of fall color around and most of the leaves are, you know, blown off by now. But, you know, a couple trees, you know, a couple sugar maples, some sycamores, like maybe have their leaves still. And, um, you know, we're in this countdown to Christmas. There is that awkward overlap, you know, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Really, it's Halloween and Christmas. And then like, oh, yeah, let's squeeze Thanksgiving into it. Um, you know, that. <laughs> I found this comic. I put it in my blog. It was a the, the picture is Santa in his sleigh with a bunch of toys on his sled, uh, but instead of reindeer, they're turkey, <laughs> and he has his whip uh, about to hit the turkey, and they're sweating bullets. And one turkey says, "This holiday overlap has gotten way out of hand." I thought that was uh, pretty amusing and, and pretty fitting, pretty accurate uh, for some of us, uh, myself included, the thought of a better year beyond the horizon. We're five weeks away from 2019. That's the last year of the decade. That blows my mind. Um, you know, sometimes I already think I'm in 2019 and that next year's 2020, but nope, got to reel it back in and we're still in 2018 mode here. Uh, so we're in this third week of November as Thanksgiving always falls in. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of like this pre-holiday rush. Um, that goes on. I mean, I'm cutting this on Black Friday, um, the cyber sale day of the year. Um, it's we're kind of in this calm before the storm that we all know is the most wonderful time of the year. Some of us are like, we're just super excited, can't wait to deck the halls, and some of us are just like dreading, like, oh man, there's so much I need to do that I haven't gotten to yet. I'm kind of caught in the middle. But I think it's good to pause at some point during this week and, and really focus on Thanksgiving as its own sacred entity. Because um, as I mentioned earlier in this pod, you know, while most grasp the importance of giving thanks, not all see it as an unconditional reality as the will of God in Christ Jesus for us. That's direct out of First Thessalonians 5.18. 
where gratitude is contagious and sacrifice is a uh, obedience metric, cheerful obedience, I should say. And Thanksgiving, uh, a light share as opposed to a light switch. In case that doesn't, that metaphor doesn't work for you, just think of, uh, you know, a light switch is kind of an on and on, like you have an on and on switch to your Thanksgiving. Um, it kind of flows with the whole compartmentalized idea. Thanksgiving is something that we should be sharing as part of the light within. Um, the main question is if our Thanksgiving is more than periodical expressions of vertical delight, if we believe that, then what's stopping us, what's hindering us from employing it horizontally among one another? Um, so there's these different verses, uh, you know, I, I've included quite a bit in this post, and um, I'll give you the references uh you go back and read them on your own, but Nehemiah twelve twenty seven, you know the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem. There was this celebration that took place um, at the dedication of the temple, and there was just a lot of music and a lot of rejoicing. The psalmist twenty six six through eight. I mean, the psalms are full of thanksgiving, but not surprisingly, uh, fifty verse twenty two through th- twenty three, Psalm sixty nine twenty nine through thirty, and one hundred seven twenty one twenty two. Just to name a few, of course. The Thanksgiving Psalm, a lot of us have uh, pegged in our minds, Psalm 100. Um, You guys can go back and and check out those references. Um, There's just so many different angles that David slash the psalmist uh, uh, approach this topic of Thanksgiving. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 13 through 15. Uh, Actually, I'll read this one because I'd really love this verse. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and also uh, bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. And, you know, there's many different verses in, uh, <laughs> about thanksgiving. I think if you did a search, like a Bible gateway search, and you just type in Thanksgiving in the search bar, and you know, I can't speak for every translation, but English Standard, which is my default, I think there's 122, if I remember correctly. Uh, don't have it open now, but just remembering uh, having gone through this, and it's, I love word studies. I love, you know, drilling down the word uh, through a phrase or a specific word that the Lord gives. But either way, we find Thanksgiving to be more than just temporary appreciation when we really study the scriptures. It's more than temporary appreciation, but rather a call to invite people to taste and see that the Lord and his provisions are good. There's other Psalms that tie to that, 34.8 specifically. Uh, Applicably, this has profound implications. So this ties into kind of the conviction that's been welling up in recent days. Uh, Sometimes in the church, Thanksgiving is confined to altar call, stage responses, and special events. Uh, For many of us, and I'm I'm even including the the special events rooted in family, like, you know, going to see this side of the family uh, this time of day, um, on this day, going to see the other side of the family this time and it's like we uh it's it's okay to express thanksgiving on thanksgiving don't get me wrong but if it's just one day of the year or one day of the week we're really missing it same way we say we don't go to church you know we're not christians one day of the week same concept applies to um what makes a christian um, including thanksgiving so when we recognize thanksgiving's pre-mayflower pre-creation context we find sanctified space celebrating what has always been what's been there not just from the beginning but all eternity what's been ongoing perpetual love and continuous offering and by that i mean giving and receiving love simultaneously that is the core the foundation of all that we know and see and experience unfortunately for many of us when it comes to thanksgiving it's easy to compartmentalize or detach giving and receiving, Uh, you know, for me, ego, independence, entitlement, agenda, these all could compromise my benevolence and uh, negotiate my generosity if I'm not careful. 
However, I also know, having been a Christian for decades, um, even though I'm still learning a lot about this, I know that dying to these rights, I expand the ten pegs, the room God has to reveal himself. Which brings me to the whole point of this episode. And that is if we desire the lost and broken to see Jesus, not only must we be intentional in declaring thanksgiving, but sharing it. For when we engage thanksgiving as celebratory, like the people in Nehemiah, uh, and communal worship, where it's, you know, it's yes, there's that, um, you know, that quiet time aspect, but there's also that you're, you're with people. Unity and community is required in all this, people. We inevitably position ourselves to glorify God as fresh revelations of his providence and other attributes, really, his grace, his mercy, his faithfulness abound. Now, this doesn't mean we dial up the decibels of our praise to prove the goodness within the other people. That's where we abuse the horizontal part. Clearly, our hearts would be misaligned if the visibility of our virtue was greater than or preceded the availability of God's power, his good will to provide it. That said, when we understand Thanksgiving as an outpouring of not just love, but interdependent love, that giving and receiving type love, sorry, that giving and receiving simultaneously love, um, and also vulnerable relationship that's you know, not afraid to speak the truth in love and all honesty and all humility, we ultimately discover how our loved by God identity can extend God's kingdom through perfect other centeredness. Now, for you listening to this, chances are your other centeredness isn't perfect, but it's being made perfect. So don't be discouraged if you feel like, oh man, I, I, I know where the holes in my selflessness are. I know where they are, and then sometimes I could be stubborn to address them or confront them. But just remember that good works is not how you perfect what needs to be perfected. Uh, it all goes back to God's work on the cross, knowing that he has paved a pathway for us to be perfect, if you will. Um, but that's another topic for another day. So think of this whole conversation this way. I'm just kind of boiling it down here as we, we come in for a landing. When I praise God for who he is and what he has done, the point of my adoration is to love Jesus first and foremost. The posture of my adoration is what opens me up to overflow the love I receive in return. And that's another thing, like, I think we get the point of adoration, but not the posture of it. And we kind of, that's part of what, you know, when I say compartmentalize, that's one of the issues that we compartmentalize. It's the vertical and horizontal component. Um, a lot of people who don't know the Lord, they they get that horizontal piece because that's like the only way they know how to express it. And I think for me, I'm a believer uh, sometimes it goes the other way where I get too content in just making it known to God, but you know, that's as far as it goes. So we have to bridge that gap if we want to reach the lost. And Thanksgiving is such a powerful a, a median, a vehicle to convey and capture the light of Jesus. And I feel like each Thanksgiving that comes around, I'm, I become more aware of a new facet. It, it really is this fascinating diamond. Um, so going back to the posture of adoration, the more, to the extent we abide in this rhythm, to that extent, God's heart, his love, his goodness, kindness, compassion, faithfulness, etc., inundates the people and places we encounter. And this ties into the author of Hebrews when he says, uh, 13, 15, through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. So, Bottom line time. Thanksgiving at its core celebrates the Trinitarian nature of God. That giving, receiving simultaneously uh, for all eternity. Yes, you know, we grow up learning about pilgrims and Native Americans and 
what happened at Plymouth Rock and all the stuff that, that went on in 1621, the very first Thanksgiving. And that's important to think about and reflect on. It's worthy of mention. But if we don't, if we're not thinking about, if we're not being thankful for the divine dance that has been going on for, forever, we're missing a, you know, the the foundation, the the core, the crux of Thanksgiving. And so some questions that I want to pose as we close here. In light of all this, why not extend Thanksgiving into each day? Why not literally give thanks as opposed to voicing it in isolation? And why not receive from the Lord as you inquire direction on what you have to offer? Because there's a, you know, there's a lot I don't know, but I do know this. You listening to this have something to offer. Not only that, but a specific reason why and we all should know who is behind that specific reason why. And it's something that only you can carry because you are one of a kind. And that, my friends, is worth being thankful to us for. So from my house to yours, I know Happy Thanksgiving has passed, but I'm just going to say Happy Thanks Space Giving. Why not say that every day? I know it seems weird because, yeah, the holiday does come once every year. But in a way, our life should, maybe we're not saying literally happy Thanksgiving day to people. But that's just kind of how we should live this message out. Our actions and our attitudes, our behaviors, our beliefs, it all should come down to this. So, last charge, don't forget to look up as you reach out. And a few words that that uh, captures again that blend, that perfect balance of vertical and horizontal uh, Thanksgiving. So, all right, guys. Well, that concludes tonight. I hope you learned at least a little something new, uh, or if not, just um, just found this encouraging to listen to, kind of soak in. Whether you're driving to work or you're driving back um, from wherever you've been spending the. Uh, the long weekend at so as always if uh you have any questions on the content if you uh, if you want a copy of the poem i don't know um if you have a prayer request um if there's anything that listen i could be standing with you in um perhaps some of you just you know as mentioned the the holidays kind of emphasizes sore points internally you feel like um or maybe another reason you feel like you're walking through hell and you just need some fuel, some, some, some help, some motivation to keep going, um, we want to be there for you, so uh, just feel free to contact us at your convenience and we will um, partner with you in, in your journey. But as always, I appreciate you guys listening to this and as I always say, I'll catch you on the fry. Peace.